Uh, here I am in QJS, and I'm taking a look at uh, habitat suitability in Surrey, and they have uh, classified it uh, from, I guess, very low all the way up to very high. I did have to do some tweaking in the background. Uh, I have some bookmarks here. There's an area I'm interested uh, call, that I've called the ravine, uh, and that uh, there's actually a little bridge here that you can walk across the ravine to get into another neighborhood. So these neighborhoods are actually fragmented, but you can actually get through here over a little bit of a walking bridge and I've rotated again I've rotated the map about minus 20 degrees you can see that down here uh, just so that uh, I can kind of focus in on the ravine part and I actually might nudge that over like that and I like that better and that stuff um, and so the thing is, I want to make a map of this, like one you could probably print out. And so does QGIS have that capability? The quick answer is yes, it does. <laughs> so under here, I'm going to save my project, but under here, we have a whole thing about print layouts, report layouts, and the layout manager. So I'm going to make it, uh, I don't have any in here yet. So if I went to the layout manager, popped off on the other screen, there's nothing in here. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to make a new print layout. So I'll like a new print one. I'm going to give it a name. Hab suit for habitat suitability done. Now I'll slide this over. It keeps popping up on my other terminal, and I'll make this large. Okay. Uh, one of the first things you probably want to do is to set the page size here. Item properties. So I clicked on the page. Basically, item properties set to A4. I'm going to make that letter. Eight and a half by eleven, landscape mode. Uh, might as well save that. I made that change. Now there's a few things. I probably want to have a title, so I have some uh, title text here, and, and that I'm going to drag the box. Okay, and uh, again under item properties, I can go habitat suitability. In that, and so I can look at that. And go, well, you know, that's kind of small, <laughs> right? So, uh, in that, so I'm going to uh, click on font. Now, when you click on font, uh, you can bring up this dialog. There is kind of a a quick sort of setting as well, but this dialog will give you more control over the family of font. Uh, I want also want to center align it. Don't really need to be that big. Shrink it in. Uh, one nice thing you see this showing up in more drawing tools is that you get these little uh, highlighting lines when you you know hit a certain key indicator that looks like the center of the page, which is fine with me. I'll put that there. There's a whole bunch of icons uh, on the side, different things that you can add to the map. You can add tables as well and reports. I'm going to add a two-dimensional map, and I'm going to drag it here. About that much, it's going to render it. Notice that I had to pay, I had to rotate it, and that didn't transfer over. I could probably link it up uh, via an expression, but right now I, I knew it was about minus 20, so I'll just add that to it, and it's rotated the map for me. I like that. Notice that the scale is pretty close to 10,000, so I'm actually going to set that to 10,000. Exactly. There we go. Happy. Uh, now there's a few other things that I can add. Uh, I can add a north arrow, so I'm going to just grab it. Notice that the north arrow is angled, right? Minus 20 degrees. So it's kind of automatically by default links to the map, which is actually exactly what I'm after. <laughs> I'll be honest in that. So put the center of that to the top of that map. That's not bad. Um, so those little guidelines that pop up here and there are really helpful. I can have a legend. So I'm going to add that here as well i'll just put that in there and see what happens what we get that's not bad that's what i was looking for okay so that's all the different ratings so uh uh I, sort of like a yellow color is very low and a very dark green gets me to you know uh like a higher habitat suitability a little bit of a color ramp happy with that now there's lots of stuff that i can add i can also add a scale bar i mean i'm not a big fan of scale bars uh, i know all the js people out there are probably you know shrieking in horror right now <laughs> in that but 
uh, one thing I can do actually is I'm going to select all these. You do have the ability like, uh, uh, oh, not the map. So can I go control, click it off? No. I'm going to have to be uh, shift click. Maybe these there. I just want these centered. So it is possible. Uh, align center. Yeah, I like that. That's better. Um, wouldn't hurt to put some scale text in there. Now, when I do this, we're going to uh, uh, notice a few things. I'm going to put another piece of text in here. And that. Uh, do I care about the font size right now? No. I want to go with dynamic text. I'm going to base it on a map property, map one. And I'm going to set the scale. Now, it sees the scale as 10,000, but I think uh, we'll you'll learn about this in programming courses. You know, the uh, imprecision in decimal numbers in computers. I'm going to change this Latin to scale there. Now, there's, pro I, there's probably some stuff that I could do in there. I could probably put in a round. Uh, and that I'm going to leave for now. I could probably add a, a math function to round that off. Do I dare try it right now? I might try it right now and see if this works. But uh, round into how many decimal places do I want to round it to? One? I don't know. We'll see what that does. Oh, I cleaned it up. Okay, so that actually worked. Uh, slightly surprised <laughs> at myself. That looks, actually, I'd love to get the comma separated there. So you know, if I was to do this again, probably. Uh, shrink this up. I think I'll center it. I'll make it easier. Again, if we get to, can we get to the font? We can. Now, if we click on this drop down arrow, slightly different. Notice there's a little quick setting for font there because it's a common thing that you're going to do. I'm going to set this up to 16. Yeah, so it's kind of, you know, readable in that. Again, do I want to? center it with all these others probably i'll just grab that again and center there that looks good it's enough for now although i'd want it probably down near the bottom oh there's a snap line i like that what about there yeah it's not bad i mean again save now there's other things you can do you can uh, export this to svg uh or P, uh, PDF. Now, PDF is pretty common, commonly supported format. It's going to work on your phone, your tablet, your laptop, your desktop. SVG is sometimes if you want to get it into another program. Uh, another program I like is ShowZ. So uh, it allows me to, uh, I guess, zoom to different parts of the map. So if I was doing a, a different type of presentation and that sort of thing. So that's where SVG might actually work for you. So that's that one over here. If I hover here, export to SVG, export to PDF. But definitely you can uh, export to PDF, like I said, very common and highly support format. And SVG is just helps with integrating to other products in case you want to do something a little bit extra with it. Or you can export it as an image as well. I'm just going to save this and that. I might. And so that's all I wanted to show you is how, how to quickly do a layout a little bit on the tools here. Now, for a more in depth coverage of uh, this layout designer, so often called the print composer, you'll hear that term a lot, is you can check out a book on Locate Press on QGIS. It's uh, Introduction to QGIS 3, which is uh, the version that we're kind of using. Uh, I believe it's chapter 12 that talks about uh, print layouts and reports. They do a pretty good job on the print layout uh, and going over it. So that's all I want to talk about now is how you can get a map done quickly in QJS using this layout designer, typically called a print composer in QJS. That's all for now.